And good morning. Thank you for tuning in and for watching ANF Plus here to give you a check of the first alert forecast. And of course, we'll have more coming up from Assembly Atlanta as we gear up for opening day and many of the celebrations happening there starting this weekend. Uh, really, they've been going on all week. We'll have a full report, uh, the latest with Maria Moreau here coming up in just a couple minutes. Uh, right now, though, I do want to talk forecast. It has been relatively gloomy. And, and earlier this morning, it was pretty stormy across North Georgia and Metro Atlanta. Good news, there is improvement in that forecast. Uh, we'll start with a live look at first alert radar right now. Fairly quiet across North Georgia uh, in Metro Atlanta, except for the far east end of the metro on into deep east Georgia. But even there, as we bring first alert radar full here, not too much uh, going on at the moment. Earlier downpours that soaked portions of Putnam County, uh, the Lake Sinclair and Oconee area. Those are now out of North Georgia. Out of the Atlanta News first viewing area, moving towards Waynesboro and Augusta, down to Sandersville. Another spot that's still seeing a little bit of moisture here up into Clay County and Raven County, uh, Georgia. So Clay County, North Carolina, the Haynesville area, Hayesville rather, uh, Shooting Creek, and then uh, back across the state line, Dillard, Georgia, Clayton, Georgia, Raven County. Notice how showers are they're redeveloping, but not much in the way of thunder and lightning with these and rain itself not all that heavy. We'll go ahead and put a pause on radar here, track these last, these most recent few showers as they track off to the south and to the east, moving at a pretty quick clip, and they'll be in the upstate of South Carolina before too long. Mountain City, estimated ETA 1113, probably start ringing uh, to rain within the next 10 minutes, long bottom forward by 1125, and then uh, Chioe, as we get into upstate South Carolina, that'll be uh, closer to the 1130 time frame, about 27 minutes from now. And of course, that is out of the Atlanta News first viewing area. Clouds, despite the lack of rain at the moment in the metro, clouds serving uh, to keep us a little bit cooler out there right now. 63, Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, 60 up in Blairsville, Athens at 60, 62 in Carrollton, 64 Locust Grove, 61 in Covington, 68 in LaGrange, obviously a little bit more sunshine down southwest uh, along the I-85 corridor and with more sun, temperatures responding pretty nicely and starting to warm up out there. And I do think we will all warm up gradually as we get into the afternoon. An afternoon in the 70s, that's the forecast for the city of Atlanta, probably peaking in the lower 70s between 3 and 5 p.m. A mix of sun and clouds by that point, winds. A little gusty here, sustained 10 to uh, maybe 15, 18 miles an hour. Uh, data that we were looking at, first alert meteorologist Rodney Harris, Ella Dorsey and I earlier this morning suggesting, you know, we could be gusting up to about 30 miles an hour. So this will be a breezy day across North Georgia and, uh, and Metro Atlanta. As we get into this evening, notice how by 8, 9, 10, sustained winds uh, taper back down less than 10 miles an hour, more of a northwesterly breeze behind a front that's moving through. Yeah, we had a front move through, gave us some rain this morning. We're going to have another couple of boundaries, another couple of fronts work their way through uh, North Georgia and Metro Atlanta, uh, serving to help us dry out, kick up our wind speeds, and then also eventually as we get into the weekend, we will have some cooler, slightly drier air building back into North Georgia and Metro Atlanta. As far as the Metro this afternoon, the big change you'll notice over the next few hours, three, four hours, the return of uh, more sunshine. I don't think completely sunny, uh, but certainly sunnier than it is outside right now. In fact, we can take a live look outside at the moment. Tons of clouds. That is Georgia 400 at I-285. Sandy Springs there in the foreground, Midtown and Downtown Atlanta. Buckhead there in the distance. Lots of clouds at the moment, but we'll break out of them. And that sunshine, at least a little bit of it, will help send temperatures back into uh, I think 70 is pretty much across the board, even Gainesville, north of Atlanta, right around 70. Mountain communities, though, could be a little bit cooler with highs in the mid, uh, maybe some upper 60s there up in Clayton, Raven County, Clay County, North Carolina, White County, Union County, Towns County. Our mountain communities could stay in the uh, 60s this afternoon. Still, though, nice and even up there, some more sunshine possible. Uh, but we'll talk about how there's a chance of a couple of thunderstorms again cropping up as we get into uh, the afternoon forecast. First, though, high temperatures, 76 in Rome, 75 Noonan, 74 Athens, Gainesville, Lake Lanier area, about 70, mid-70s in Atlanta, 74 your forecast high temperature. So trying to get up into the mid-70s today, at least for a time. And as temperatures warm up, we'll have to watch for the possibility of some new showers and thunderstorms developing. And here is that hour-by-hour -hour forecast. Going to reel it back. Notice how rain and storms are modeled pretty well by this 
computer model, one run of one model, uh, generally east and southeast of the city of Atlanta. And as we go forward in time, notice how the grays and the whites shift away, and we're going to see more sunshine in Atlanta, but also notice some of those downpours developing up in the highlands of, of North Carolina, the mountains of North Carolina, the upstate of South Carolina, East Tennessee. Uh, as another boundary moves through, they will be moving south and east, and, and some of those try to get into extreme northeast Georgia, maybe as far south as Oglethorpe County, east of Atlanta, maybe as far south as the, uh, the general Augusta metro area, again, east of metro Atlanta, east of the Atlanta News First viewing area. But the chance is there, a minimal chance, but one or two of those storms could produce frequent lightning and thunder, at least some brief heavy rain and some gustier breezes, very small pea-sized tail of possibility, a possible as well. But by and large, the majority of the rain is out of here, and I think that the rain chance that we have this afternoon and early this evening will be minimal. Only a couple more storms, a possibility later this afternoon and this evening. If you do have any afternoon and evening plans across North Georgia, Metro Atlanta, obviously it's a busy Friday or going to be for many folks. You're looking, you're looking pretty good. I want to remind you we are streaming across many platforms right now. If you have any weather questions, comments, concerns, we are streaming live. Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, the Atlanta News First app, First Alert Weather app, Always catch the forecast there as well and at atlantanewsfirst.com. Uh, if you have any weather questions, comments, concerns, and you would like those questions answered, addressed, uh, YouTube is the place to be. Just search Atlanta News First. Give that account a like and a follow, and that way you can be alerted to any of our future live streams, whether they're about breaking news, more about Assembly Atlanta, or the latest first alert forecast. And before we send it over to Maria Moreau, we're going to go ahead and talk about that seven-day extended forecast here, getting back into the picture. Temperatures warmest today into tomorrow. We will warm back up. In fact, the front half of the weekend a little bit milder. High temperature tomorrow of 76. 73 on Sunday. So a little cooler, some cooler, drier air filters back into North Georgia. We're going to be watching maybe some breezy winds developing across uh, North Georgia and, and Metro Atlanta. And we'll be uh, watching uh, for that to, uh, to transpire over the next uh, several days. It's going to take some while, but we will, uh, could take some time, I should say, but we will see cooler, drier weather uh, filter back in to North Georgia and metro Atlanta. Notice those mornings trending a little cooler as we get into next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. A sign of uh, fall still in our forecast and more pleasant weather on the way. In fact, I want to remind you if you want to get the 10 day forecast looking even deeper into the future, maybe a first look at those days leading up to Halloween. That full forecast is always available at atlantanewsfirst.com and in the first alert uh, weather app. We're going to be watching that forecast here for you as it evolves. Just know in general this weekend is going to be absolutely stunning and uh, and it's shaping up to be absolutely beautiful out there. Again, no real concerns with the forecast as we go deeper into the picture here and, and that's good news because we have oh so much going on across uh, metro Atlanta and north Georgia this afternoon, this evening, this weekend. Uh, digital producer Maria Moreau uh, the big story, Assembly Atlanta, you have a crew out there. We've had crews out there all week long, and there is uh, there is a lot going on as we get into the weekend, right? Yeah, if you haven't been following throughout this week, first of all, where have you been? We have been covering uh, <laughs> exactly. this 135-acre yeah. space in Doraville, yeah. you know, honoring the former General Motors Assembly plant now standing, this future of film that's about to come to Georgia with the unveiling of Assembly Atlanta. We're going to get into all of the work that's been been put over the years into bringing this to a reality and what you can expect this weekend. You know, Cutter, you talked about the weather. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be quite a party on Saturday. Yeah, you know, we were worried at some point talking with the bosses the bosses about a week uh, to 10 days ago. It was looking like it was going to be a wet and maybe cold, windy weekend. Uh, Mother Nature must be a fan of this new development and all the big projects that will come out of it. Uh, you'll hear more about that in a moment because uh, forecast has trended nicer. We've just showed folks a seven day reminder if you're watching, if you're coming into town for any of these events. First Alert Weather App and Atlanta News First, uh, great mobile locations to check the forecast. But Maria, it's looking absolutely uh, stunning. 
sunshine and pleasant temperatures as we get into the weekend. Which is all leading up to uh, what we will have here on Atlanta News First yeah. Plus, a star-studded gala red carpet stream yeah. for you to enjoy as we celebrate the unveiling of Assembly Atlanta and all that's to come. In fact, our reporter, Don Shipman, brought us a little preview, if you're watching this morning on Atlanta News First, of everything you can expect this Saturday. The lights are being hung, the sound is being checked, and the food is being delivered. All in anticipation of Assembly Atlanta's grand opening gala. The red carpet's going to be rolled down the main street. So you get out of the car, there's a red carpet. As Ella prepares for hosting duties of this Saturday's main event, which will be streamed live on ANF Plus and Gray TV's Local News Live, construction crews are busy installing the finishing touches to the Sky Lounge which oversees the stage where some of Atlanta's finest will perform. Killer Mike's going to be there. CeeLo Green is performing. Sheryl Crow, Gladys Knight. So kind of music for everyone. This invite only event will host more than 2,500 guests. An assembly soundstage and back lot will serve as the event space. Bar captain, serving captain. Catering an event this size is a huge undertaking. Sterling Culinary Management is deploying nearly 300 staffers, bartenders, barback, servers, offering up Georgia centric cuisine with an Atlanta flair. So we have a lot of uh, great uh, Georgia uh, restaurants involved, a lot of great food trucks um, in Atlanta. Uh, so we have charcuterie, we have, uh, you know, raw bars. Uh, so we have tons of different things and a lot of great handmade cocktails. Um, and of course, local Georgia beers as well. And that was our Don Shipman taking you around some previews of this gala, the gala that we've been putting together here at Atlanta News First in partnership with our parent company, Gray Television. We have so much to bring to you today as we close out Assembly Atlanta Week and all of the amazing and hard work that's been going into bringing this unveiling to life and celebrating Doraville and this new opportunity for filmmaking, film creation, and jobs here in Atlanta. As we continue our coverage, we are actually going to take you out to our anchor, Gravir Dinza, reporter Don Shipman, who you just heard from. They are at Assembly Atlanta on site. We've actually been bringing you all of our news coverage from Assembly Atlanta just to show you a preview of the this magnificent 135 acre space. It is not just a space dedicated to film production and warehouses. It is also made to empower local business. We're talking retail, uh, livable housing, uh, corporate offices, so many people that will benefit from using this space. So coming up in just a couple minutes, we will be talking to Gervier Dinza and Don Shipman. But first, Artori Cooper takes you inside one of the massive sound stages. I'm Tori Cooper and right now I'm 51 feet up in the air. Thankfully, I'm not afraid of heights because out here at Assembly Studios, production crews are going to have all of the amenities that we get to show you. So tonight, we're talking all about the fact that crews, when they come here to shoot a movie or just create anything, they will be able to do it on a soundstage like this. A soundstage? What is that? So a purpose-built soundstage, you know, really is designed for the folks that come here and create content to make a workflow that's repeatable and reliable and gives us elements of control, one of which is in the name, sound. So you can tell just we were on an active construction site moments ago. We come in here and it's dead. This catwalk allows crews to control light and power to the set in a safe environment. We've got tilt panel concrete walls, so 14 inch thick concrete, and then we have uh, series of, of, of layers of insulation that go interior and on the roof and it really deadens the sound so you can't there's no echo there's no nothing in here from up there to down here you are in full control you gotta let everyone know it's quiet on the set you're gonna use your bell and light system there are 19 different sound stages at Assembly Studios. Each one is different in size, but this one is equipped with eight different hair and makeup rooms, and there's even office space. And outside, you can be somewhere completely different. We're in the French Quarter, y'all. Take a look. This is just one of the many different facades that they have here at Assembly Studios. Down the way, there's also a facade recreating Tribeca, New York a brownstone in New York, and even a trip to Europe. And this is only one small part of the bigger picture out here at Assembly Studios. I'm Tori Cooper, Atlanta News First. And we are now joined by our very own Atlanta News First anchor, Gravier Dinza, reporter Don Shipman, taking you out to Assembly Atlanta. Guys, can you hear me all right? 
Yes, we, we got you. We got you. It's a work in progress. <laughs> it is. We just are like this with place. The technology. Oh my gosh. Oh, Maria, can I just tell you, so Don and I have been out here all week. Um, it's wild. It's the only way to describe it, it's, right? It's, well, it's just fun to see it all come together. Right. One, there's a couple things. First, I mean, we were all here a year ago when right. there was nothing. Yep. And then to see it a year later and really to take shape. But then throughout the course of this week, what you're looking at right here when you're looking at the, the, the retention pond, the water level right. has raised throughout the week. The, the stage has been set. Yep. Everything gearing up for this grand opening here at Assembly Studios well, for this gala that's coming up. So, like, so when we first came out here, uh, we started Monday afternoon, right, mm -hmm. around 3 o'clock, and then the morning crew was out Tuesday morning, and when we came out Tuesday morning, I don't, none of this stuff, like, this stuff wasn't even set up. It wasn't here. Like, it wasn't even here. It's crazy. These, so when we have talked a lot about, um, you know, how hard they're working, I am telling you, Ismir, can you kind of pan around and show some oh, yeah. of these construction guys? Okay, so this is what's been kind of going on behind the scenes around us right we're walking we're working there <laughs> hey that's a sneak peek at my surprise squad you're looking at right there by the way uh, <laughs> that dog happens to be the assembly mascot just so you know and um, oh <laughs> that yeah that pup and that man right there you're gonna be seeing them what this time? evening Later, at five o'clock during our five o'clock newscast I can't give everything away but um, you'll definitely be seeing them okay but we're on the fifth floor of building two building, building two, two yeah. and literally they're painting around us they're drilling around us so if you've been hearing noises or music playing it's because they're kind of testing the sound system out a little bit well it's funny too like i was uh chatting with the catering crew uh -huh. they're a separate entity they have a contract with uh assembly and they're asking me they're like well do you guys have access to this i'm like listen They've given us full access. We have been going in and around the construction <laughs> crew. We're kind of in their way. They're we like, can, are. can you move out of the way, please? But right. It's kind of neat to see it all come together here. Actually, there's a fellow standing over there right now. and uh, There he is right there. I said, uh, hey, do you mind taking a picture for us? And he goes, my hands are covered in grease. You don't want to be touching your phone. <laughs> hands are covered in grease. Man, these guys, I'm telling you, it is, uh, it's massive. It is spectacular. It's beautiful. Um, throughout the day today and you know um, on Atlanta News First Plus and also during our newscast we're going to be showing you just how spectacular some of this is. I'm talking granite. These are teak floors. That countertop right over there is pure granite. It's no funny. expense is spared. It's funny because Gravier's in the middle of a renovation at home so when she <laughs> came up here she's been asking all the contractors like well, what, what, what kind of finish is that? I did exactly <laughs> do that and I also said my place is covered in dust. It is covered in dust and uh, the general contractor he's he's uh, the general contractor for works for Jay Gibson uh -huh. for the Gibson company but he's the contractor for buildings one two and three and he goes that uh, drywall dust It'll you'll have it. it'll be around for a while. Yeah, it'll be around. He said Make you'll friends. clean it and then you'll <laughs> clean it again and then you'll clean it again. So they're going to be cleaning it and cleaning it and cleaning it to get ready for that gala. Speaking of which, talk about the gala. Oh my God, this is so incredible. Uh, we're talking about 2,500 invited guests. Okay. That that number, from what I understand, started off a little bit uh, lower. And it Hilton Hell's got a few friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's it's star studded. I mean. We have Cheryl Crow, who's going to be taking to the stage. Right. Um, CeeLo Green. Uh, this, I mean, just Gladys a, Knight is Gladys going to be here. Gladys Knight is yep. going to be here performing. Right. And th they've transformed one of the sound stages, which is just massive. The sound, like you know, a sound stage can transform into anything you want it to be. So right. it's going to be an event space for the for the gala. They're going to funnel everyone into that sound stage, and the doors are going to be closed to this back lot that we're looking at right now. Uh huh. And what uh, Hilton Howell, the CEO of Gray TV, the owner of our our station, Planet Who's First, he was telling me that what they're going to do is they're going to open those massive doors to the sound stage for like essentially a big reveal. Like it looks really cool right now. You can see all the different colors. Uh -huh. Now imagine this at post 6 p.m., right around 7 p.m. really when they open those doors. And the lighting here, obviously it's gonna be darker, but they're gonna be able to control the lighting and right. you can just imagine how beautiful all of these props are gonna look like. Man, it's gonna be, it's gonna be yeah. kicking. It's gonna be kicking, it's gonna be a party. Yes. Um, it's gonna be a red carpet gala. And yes. we're gonna be, by the way, carrying that live That's on right. Peachtree TV. 
on Peachtree TV and um, ANF Plus, so right, right here, you can start watching that at 6 o'clock. Yep. That's going to be hosted by our Ella Dorsey and Monica Pearson as mm -hmm. well, so that should be a lot of fun. And Brooks is going to be on stage Brooks. a little bit later to in introduce some special guests. Yes, and can I just, I'm just going to give this up, but Ella hasn't, she's like barely been eating. She, I'm like, Ella, there's some great food. And she goes, I'm not eating. i got to fit into that amazing dress that I've got to wear. She's got two dresses. She's got two dresses. She's, she's going to look dresses. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and this, it's just really incredible to see this all unfold. And we've been chatting with a lot of different people. So, for example, today, earlier in the program, um, or in the morning show, we chatted with the director of the Carter Center Library. Right. And mm -hmm. just talking about, like, I don't think a lot of people understood this or know this, but, like, why is Georgia the Hollywood of the, of the South? Right. Well, it, it has a lot to do with the groundwork that was laid way back when, when Jimmy Carter, former mm -hmm. President Jimmy Carter, was governor of Georgia. Yes, and he founded the, the he set up, established the Film Commission, right? So exactly. that Which office wasn't didn't exist. Didn't exist. Until then. He understood the importance of that, and he understood that. Georgia stands to benefit from right. that. He wanted to implement those um, tax incentives, which eventually came about, and which are are uh, a, a part of our state at this point. Right. And I understand that, like, just full disclosure, there is debate on, you know, should those um, tax incentives be at the level they're at? Should they be scaled back? That's mm -hmm. something that's going to be debated for a while right. um, under the Gold Dome. But it's just interesting to see where it was then, the film industry here right. in Georgia, and where it is now. Come a long way since deliverance. <laughs> Exactly. Back in the it's, day. It's so true. Okay. So, great stuff going on from Assembly Atlantic. I kind of want to wrap it up by talking about my little surprise squad. Okay. Do if it. You'll swing back around and show that man in that orange jacket and his pup. Um, <laughs> there are there are surprise squad tonight, okay? So I can't give you the whole story just now, but you got to tune in during our 5 o'clock newscast. Say hey. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you'll find out why they got the got, got our attention. Okay. 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 So it's going to be kind of cool. When it, you just like just for a little insider, I don't uh -huh. know if you've ever revealed this, but like, how do you um, end up picking it? Does people email you? Yeah, people like, how does email it us. We get a lot of emails from different people. And then since we were out at assembly this week, we knew we were going to be out at assembly. I was on vacation last week, so the Monday before I went on vacation, right before I got on the road, I zipped out here to assembly and we found someone kind of neat okay and um surprised him That's awesome. and he was pretty he was pretty stunned well he, yeah he <laughs> he said he said to me he goes i had no idea uh, I, I was surprised all so, right yeah, yeah. so it's not been giving great, anything away but it yeah. has been <laughs> great fun and we're so glad that we we're able to bring it to you the sun's starting to come out too I know, it's finally. I mean, it's we started off a little bit of rain this morning. We were like, oh, but yeah. tomorrow is promising to be wonderful weather. And it, yeah, I mean, it feels fine now, too. Spectacular. Thank All you All right, both Maria, so that's much. it for us out here at Assembly Atlanta. Back to you. Thank you both so much. We are excited to showcase your surprise squad, a wonderful way to give back to this hardworking crew and to see that pup on TV one more time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, and uh, by the way, as we're continuing to cover the latest uh ahead of our big unveiling on Saturday, we actually got to speak to some of the people that were involved in bringing this vision of Assembly Atlanta into life and what we recognize it as today, this massive 135 acre space of immersive opportunity uh, and, and really pushing Doraville and Georgia forward for years to come. We talked to, on our Atlanta News First show this morning, with Cardelia Hunter. She is a 15 year film industry entertainment veteran and she shared some of what she's excited for as we get into the final hours ahead of our big unveiling. Director of Film and Entertainment for the City of Atlanta's Mayor's Office, Cardelia Hunter. Thanks for being with us this morning. Thanks for having me. So you are the really the person in charge of allowing things to be shot on Atlanta streets, right? They absolutely. have to come see you first. They have to come <laughs> see us first, absolutely. So how does that work? Kind of walk us through that process. Yeah, so usually when they're ready to film or getting ready to film, they will come and do a production meeting with us just to let us know what it is that they want to do on the streets. Uh, at that time, we um, help them with their permitting process by uh, being that one-stop concierge service, I like to say, mm -hmm. and move them around the city of Atlanta with the stakeholders inside the city and outside the city of Atlanta office. You know, sometimes when, when you see a movie, um, it was actually made maybe a, a year or filmed a year before. Yeah, absolutely. So how far ahead of the process does, does all this begin? Well, it just depends on that production right. and, you know, what the complex of, of filming. Uh -huh. Sometimes they start out, you know, doing what we call 
while scouting a year out, sometimes six months out. But as soon as they touch ground and they know they want to film in the city of Atlanta, they come see us. So let me ask you this. When you see and you come onto a campus, this site of Assembly Atlanta, uh, you who's been in the industry for some time, what do you see when you see this? I see job opportunities. Mm -hmm. I see um, more creativity being done here. And I think it's a, a great um, I think it's great for the city of Atlanta, mm -hmm. as well as the state of Georgia, to be able to offer another um, studio of this magnitude to come here. So because this is private property, uh, those companies or productions that want to film here don't really have to go through you, correct? Yes, correct. But the ripple effect is Absolutely. certainly there, is yes. it not? Yes, because a lot of times, you know, that big production, they will be at one of the major studios like Assembly, right. where they'll call their home, but when they want to come out and get those street scenes, film in the park, then that's when they'll come see us. So we'll play like pity pat with each other. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny you say that because I happen to be riding um, just outside of Midtown, I spotted a movie and it was Michael B. Jordan and Ooh. then I realized it was a piece of Creed 3 in really? that movie. I said, that's the spot that he was in. And then did of you course, see him? I, I did. Y'all saw him? <laughs> oh. He didn't see me, but I saw him. <laughs> uh, but that's really cool and we know how important something like that is. Do you think this is going to provide some more opportunities uh, as far as like exposures? Because I think of a lot of young film producers, everybody kind of wants to get into the industry, but maybe mm. they just don't know how to start. Yes, absolutely. I think that this would definitely um, just keep tripling down for mm -hmm. our young um, creatives to be able to you know eventually be on the big stage one day yeah. our office we um, created the set south production assistant training program and it's for city of atlanta residents especially a lot of young creatives mm -hmm. um, there's a rigorous program that they go through mm -hmm. so that they can you know eventually come on set to work now they start at the bottom mm -hmm. but we teach them great soft skills so they can work their way up to the top you know the we've been with a strike yes. uh, and that certainly has hurt a lot of people I mean not just the people that are out of work right now yes. but it's hurt the local economy too your office probably seen a big slump oh yes we have we took a really uh, downturn right um, when it came to permitting and, and the, you know the city um, in itself you know we saw it especially for the small businesses who usually mm -hmm. uh, where a film you know has a big impact on them they too have you know it's, right. it's been you know a little slumberly but Somewhere. it's going it's it's to come back up and back. real quick before you go. <laughs> yes. Favorite, favorite film? Oh, my favorite film here. would have to be, uh, I'm going to say Baby Driver, because our office won the um, Film Commission Award for that. Mm -hmm. That's when we work with the state of Georgia, uh -huh. DOT, to shut down the streets and the, um, the freeways to get the shots. <laughs> got, <laughs> so, it, got it, got it. Yes. Cardelia Hunter, thank thanks you. for being with us thank and spending you. some thank time you for with having us. Me. Keep on doing what you're doing. It's making a difference out here. Be sure to download the free Atlanta News First app, because we are going to post this interview there. So if you want to go back and check it out again, uh -huh. we will be sure to air it there and then of course from 10 a.m. to noon be sure to check out Atlanta News First Plus on your favorite device because we'll have more exclusive stories from Assembly Atlanta. And Brooke said it best, we are continuing to bring you the latest coverage and more. I wanted to show you this timeline right here. This was the 135 acre space, the former GM uh, General Motors assembly plant that opened back in 1945 and unfortunately closed in 2008, leading to a lot of job loss and devastation for the city of Doraville. This city, uh, uh, this, this community built itself around that GM plant. So this location, very special to the people of Doraville um, and having long lasting impact for Atlanta now is the site of Assembly Atlanta and a future of film, a future for opportunity here in Atlanta and bringing more jobs in boosting our economy. And that's something that benefits us all. So I wanted to show you some of these uh, construction images and timeline and leading to today. Assembly Atlanta as it stands. I mean, you can see some of these cityscapes and sets and sound stages. It's just a massive space uh, that will not only benefit film production, but it will create a space for all. I mean, there is going to be livable housing here. There is going to be an entertainment center, retail, small business uh, opportunities. So much that we want to showcase for you here on Atlanta News First Plus. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this commercial break.
weather. Atlanta's no stranger to it. Power outages, flooded streets, hail damage, we've seen it all. That's why Atlanta News First has the largest team of meteorologists in the entire southeast. To keep watch over your street so no neighborhood is left in the dark. Seven meteorologists giving you first alerts no matter where you are. Days before a drop hits the ground, hours before the first rumble of thunder. To keep you ready for anything, this is why we first alert. This is your home for Atlanta TV. Woo! Oh. <sighs> Did not over top. Well, we've toasted too. Life. That is glistening, by Isn't the way. It beautiful? Wow. If I was a cougar, trust me, tall glass of water would have been going home with me. Ah! So you a man with two chicks and you ain't having fun? At all. Yes, yes. Oh my This is my diva then. God. You can't say anymore, Anthony. What would you do? What? This. <laughs> <laughs> on Atlanta's own Peachtree TV. It's a problem every night on Atlanta roads. Drivers without lights. Now you see me, now you don't. So why does it keep happening? Atlanta News First investigates, exposing a fault in many cars that's leaving drivers in the dark. It's not careless, they have no idea. Scan this code to go directly to the story and learn why every night drivers are risking it all with lights out. Good afternoon, good morning. Megan Packer here with Atlanta News First Plus. Our coverage continues right now of Assembly Atlanta as we get closer and closer to the grand opening of this really exciting addition to Metro Atlanta. Maria was taking you on a tour of the facility. You heard some of the behind the scenes stories of what goes into this. And there are so many different facets that we are excited to touch on when it comes to what goes into putting on the productions that happen at a studio like this and of course a big part of any production is how the actors look I'm talking the costumes and that is a big part of what will be happening here at Assembly Atlanta and Assembly Studios when things are shooting and filming there so Atlanta News first anchor Lana Harris is getting a behind-the-scenes look at what goes into costume designing think about all of the different wardrobe changes and uh, you know measuring the actors and actresses picking out all of the clothes that they wear for something down to the littlest detail. So Lana is showing us a little bit of what goes into that and we'll continue our tour on the other side of that. You may think you love clothes. Look how amazing this yeah. is. <laughs> but Marcella Caudill is no ordinary shopper. It's so easy to get distracted by all the pieces. And this is no ordinary clothing store. We are at Cali Collection in Norcross. They have everything. Everything. Shoes, socks, jackets, dresses, accessories, shirts, belts from every decade dating back to the 1920s. I want all of these. Adil says this is basically her playground because she's a costume designer. Every piece can tell a story and you can create a million different characters. Her job is to find looks for actors, whether they're security, housewives, or children in any era. So when you say teacher, you know, you see teacher. You may wonder how someone so young knows what was fashionable decades before she was born. Let's go to the 60s. Cadell says they have yearbooks and catalogs from stores like Sears, seemingly dating back to the beginning of time. Little cropped boxy tops, crochet knits, and it can kind of help you build the character. She's helped style big names like Laura Dern, Aldous Hodge, and Charlie Day, and possibly some of your favorite movies with clothes from this very location. All Eyes on Me, which was like 90s Tupac movie. I worked on The Founder, which was the McDonald's 60s film, Hidden Figures, which was 60s. She says finding multiple looks for an entire cast takes a full team of people because the process is intensive. If you see an actor wearing a white t-shirt, seven, at least seven people have touched that t-shirt. But Cadill says it's all worth it watching the actors morph into their character before their eyes. It helps tell the story and become the person they need to be for the script.
Yeah, think about that. Every piece of clothing that they wear has been painstakingly thought of, no doubt, with many different hands on it. And it's not just the clothing. Of course, hair and makeup is a huge part of a production. And there are a bunch of green rooms there where the actors and actresses will be getting ready. Uh, Assembly Studios has 250,000 square feet of stage space. That includes the production offices, the warehouses, mill space, just everything that goes into making a production possible. So Atlanta News First anchor Lana Harris has a look now at uh, where the hair and makeup will be done and talks to one of these local makeup artists about what it's like to work in that part of a production. Take a look. Another day, another experience. It's like a new adventure every time I wake up and go to work. Natalie Hayes got into the makeup profession the same way a lot of people get into their jobs. Uh, completely by accident. But she realized she had a knack for detail, creativity, and clearly organization. This is the spread she takes with her to every job to account for every skin type and skin color on the spectrum. I've got several different palettes. Complete with what she calls the unforgiving light. I will be able to see anything and everything. And she needs it to do everything from beauty makeup to adding bruises and aging actors by years. Just accentuating the lines that are already in the face or, you know, um, I've taken someone's hair and like lightened it. Turns out that's not as easy as it looks, especially as they start over every day of filming. Then sometimes they've got situations where there's a wound plus aging, plus this, plus that, you know, so they're also having to keep track of continuity because you always shoot out of um, sequence. In her 13-year career, Hayes has worked with big names like Jeff Foxworthy, T-Pain, Ric Flair, even the cast of The Walking Dead. She says there's never a dull moment with this job. I would love to go to lunch because a zombie would sit, you know, right across from me, like looking completely dead, but have like, you know, have like a knife or something through their skull and they'd be like eating a salad and talking on the cell phone to like his girlfriend. But one client in particular still amazes her to this day. I did makeup for President Carter. And it was just like the realization of like, this man has been like president of, of the country, you know, and I'm, I'm just in here, me and him kicking it. She says the feeling of working on someone she grew up admiring is like none other. It's like a cool full circle kind of thing that I never would have imagined. Anna Harris, Atlanta News First. And you know, so much of what's happening out here uh, at Assembly Atlanta and Assembly Studios is honoring the past, the present, and the future. We are so excited to look ahead to what's to come there, but there's so much history in this space. Of course, this was a GM plant for years, employed so many people, a very rich history there. And part of what it used to be will be honored here at this new complex. So Atlanta News First reporter Patrick Quinn tells us a little bit about the history of what was once on this site in Doraville and how it will be honored as we move forward. Hank Bird started working at the General Motors plant in Doraville in 1977, 30 years after it opened. He was 19. I quit five times in my mind that night. But Hank persevered. He kept at it. Honestly, he said because they paid a lot. My best day there was the day I started because I knew I had a means of supporting my family and uh, making a better life for us. Hank would go on to work at GM for 32 years, one of thousands who clocked in making the American automobile. And throughout the metal, tires, pistons, and paint grew friendships and families. Amidst the spark plugs, sometimes there were sparks, and on occasion, romance. This is Chuck and Carol Eitzen, now living in Duluth. Married in 1979, still married today, yes, they met while working together at GM Doraville. Oh, and the best man? That's Rick Hurd. He also worked there. The Doraville plant at I-285 and Buford Highway produced 9.5 million cars from 1947 until it closed in September 2008. Building Monte Carlos and Chevelles when I first started, and when, I, when we ended, when, when we closed the plant, we were building the minivan. <laughs> we were building soccer, soccer mom vans. <laughs> we built 528 cars per shift typically, and the line can't stop. Catrice Hatton started in the body shop around the time Hank was retiring. She didn't know Hank, 
She also didn't know cars. Coming from telecommunications, her tie to GM was her dad who worked there. And it gave her a path up into management. It was the American dream. It's definitely the American dream that I grew up with. Definitely. Catrice stayed four years, a short stint compared to most of her colleagues. But she admits it was a formative pit stop. I'm so glad that I can say that I have had been there and I'm a better person because of it. Shortly after Catrice left, the plant closed in 2008. After 32 years, Hank retired. He says his joints are worn, his hands weathered. These days, he's traded in gear shifts and gaskets for a guitar. Hank now travels the Southeast with his band. He's got that forever knack for fine tuning. For decades in Dorville, inside the GM plant, there were ups, plenty of downs, and along the assembly line, men, women, black, white, young and old building cars and an unforgettable community. You're bonded around things like quality, throughput, and just the overall success of keeping the place open. You know, I just uh, feel I was extremely blessed to be able to uh, work for a company like that. Over there. That was our Patrick Quinn bringing us that. Uh, talk about a history of this site. At its height, that GM plant employed 3,000 people. So, so many individual stories of how that location impacted so many people's lives. So, you can imagine it was uh, quite a process to get to the point where we are today with uh, just everything that goes into getting a project like this off the ground. Atlanta News First reporter Chelsea Bimefor tells us a little bit more about the decision process that went into getting us to this point, how this project actually got off the ground, and what it took to make it a reality. You can imagine uh, it probably was a, a pretty big undertaking. Here's what Chelsea found out. Over there, it's meant to look like the French Quarter. Uh, I believe that's New York brownstone. Dorville Mayor Joseph Geierman showed us the sound stages that are nearing completion at Assembly Atlanta. Soon, they'll be used to start cranking out TV shows and movies, but long before gray television took over, the 135-acre property was home to a different type of assembly. Uh, they cr produced GM cars through their whole uh, existence, everything from the Woody to classics all the way up to modern day. The General Motors plant opened in the heart of Doraville in the 1940s. It brought thousands of jobs and people to the small town. The city really grew up around the GM plant. It, it was a really important part of the city for a long time. But in 2008, GM closed the plant and the city was left wondering what would happen and what could replace so many jobs. Six years later, a developer purchased the property for 50 million. They tore down the plant and began redeveloping the site, only to be halted by the COVID-19 pandemic. About 2020 as when we first came and walked on the site for the first time. That's when Gray CEO Hilton Howell and developer Jay Gibson entered the picture, drawing up plans for a new creative and innovative production hub. And by early 2021, specifically around April, uh, we closed on the property and then uh, we filed our permits. Gray broke ground in September of 2021, and just over two years later, construction of Phase 1 is almost complete. Moving forward, you know, it's a state-of-the-art production facility. Everything from lighting, grip, wardrobe, props, 3D printing, transpo, everything. Assembly Atlanta will employ roughly 4,000 people and help reinvigorate the heart of Doraville as it was so long ago. And we're joined now with our very own Atlanta News First reporter, Chelsea Bimefor. Now, we just saw that full timeline, a little overview of where we are here today with Assembly Atlanta and soon to be open to the public and here in Doraville. Uh, tell me a little bit about what it was like to put this story together. It was really cool. I mean, I, about a year ago when I started working at Atlanta News First, went out to that assembly property as it was still being built. And now to go back a year later and see all the progress that's been made, um, it's just really mind blowing. I was talking to the developer in that story, Jay Gibson, that you just heard from, and I was like, this project really moved quickly. I mean, Gray bought the property 
in 2020, and then they broke ground in 2021. And here we are now just over two years later. It's just kind of crazy to see how fast all of this moved, especially just the, the vast, like these buildings are huge. They're sound studios. They're thousands of feet long and wide and tall. Um, I think there's more than a dozen of these sound stages. The property is just massive. And to think that this has all gone up in the span of about two years is just incredible to think about. And just as you said, this property is massive. I'll show some more video that uh, you actually took uh, here in a moment. But I mean, walking around must have been really breathtaking for you and just to, to stand there and to know how much impact it's going to have on this community. Yeah, well, actually, we didn't even walk because it's so big. They put us on like a golf cart gator four wheeler thing and drove us around. Um, they gave us a big tour, drove us from all the office buildings to the sound stages to the um, there's going to be a park and a pond where the public will be able to walk through and eventually down the road um, restaurants and other retail stores. So you kind of felt like a little mouse, like in a large house with all this stuff around you. But it was a really, yeah, just neat experience to see all that. And like you said, this is going to have a huge economic impact on Doraville, on Atlanta. Doraville, if you don't know, is a really small town. There's only about 10,000 people that live there. So this is going to bring jobs to the area, hopefully bring some more people to Doraville. We spoke to the mayor in that piece that you just watched. Um, and I think some of our other reporters have more in-depth conversations with him and our assembly coverage. But, you know, this is a big win for Doraville and Metro Atlanta. And speaking of the Doraville mayor, I mean, we saw some of his excitement about this project, uh, as I'm sure so many others. But we talk about, uh, you know, not just film here. This isn't just a, a new studio that's coming. This is really a move forward for Doraville, for DeKalb County. Um, during your conversation with the mayor, I mean, wh what did he highlight as was his most uh, proud moment for Assembly? I think just like you've probably heard this a lot, but it's going to be live work play. So obviously huge movie studios, but it's going to be and you can see this in some of the video that we've been playing. Like there are streets that run through it right by those big facades that look like New York in the French Quarter. And there's going to be literally a public access road that runs straight through that. So I think he was just really proud of the fact that, you know, it's going to bring jobs, but it's also going to be inclusive that, you know, families can come play at the park, go to the pond, eventually hopefully get, you know, dinner, go shopping down there. Um, it's just going to be huge development for the city of Doraville. And we talk about where the, what this location was before and it was a General Motors plant and now becoming a, uh, Assembly Atlanta, becoming this lively working space for so many. Um, I know you're not a fortune teller, but <laughs> from, from what you've gathered from standing in that space that a lot of us just haven't had the opportunity to do yet, uh, what do you see in the future? Definitely job creation. I mean, like I said, you feel like you're so small in this huge space. Um, I think when we're talking to the developers and you know the the big wigs with Gray Television, they think that about 4,000 jobs will be created here um, between production and actors and um, what have you at all these these different um, opportunities that are coming down the line. But it was so, you know, maybe I'm a little bit dumb, but I was always like, why is this called assembly? But it clicked when I did this story because it used to be an assembly line when it was the the General Motors plant many many years ago um, so I think it's kind of creative that they were able to take that history and sort of incorporate it now into the future moving forward. Uh, what are some things to look out for places uh, parts of Assembly Atlanta to make sure to check out? Yeah, so, I mean, it you know, it depends on what <laughs> the public will be able to see when it, you know, first opens, but, like, the sound stages are just massive. I've never been, well, I have been to Hollywood, but not, like, in a sound stage, so getting to see that, it's like, you just, I don't know, it's, it's so interesting to see how that all works behind the scenes, just, like, news, TV news and television, it's like you go into that other realm and you're like, wow, I had no idea how large these buildings were that they literally build little cities in and sets and stuff. So if you get the opportunity to walk through those, super cool. And then um, they were in the middle still of build, building this big pond and like a pool area where there's going to be fountains. It's just so neat and then there's going to be a green space which they're still in the process of building um eventually all that will be open to the public as well but yeah just right now it's so interesting that it, it looks like the hollywood of the south and we'll get a chance to see your full story later today on atlanta news first final thoughts i mean you you have one of the first people <laughs> outside of the people who made this uh, happen to see it in all of its glory and um, what can you tell us yeah i mean it's 
it's honestly kind of an honor when you put it that way that you know not that many people have been able to see it yet but hopefully all these stories that we're going to be bringing you this week kind of shed a little bit more light on the project and um, we've got so many angles covered literally figuratively we've got this amazing drone video that shows just how vast and wide um, this project is but it's going to be really cool when it's all done and um, I think it'll be really interesting moving forward to see what kind of shows and movies are filmed here you know at the end they've always got that Georgia film um, sticker like when the credits roll and you're always are like, oh, I wonder where that was filmed. But a lot of that is now, hopefully, going to be filmed at assembly. So, another be right reason, in your backyard. <laughs> yep, another reason to call us the Hollywood of the South, Chelsea. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. Yeah, you know, you keep an eye out for the peach that pops up at the end credits of different movies that you watch, and that's how you know that it was filmed in Georgia. It's so interesting that Chelsea got that up-close look that we've uh, been really excited to bring you. And she touched on this a little bit in her piece about the history of the GM plant there. And, you know, there was a, a gaping hole for a while. If you are familiar with that part of Metro Atlanta for a while, you would drive by that spot, and maybe you were wondering, hey, I know what once stood here what is the future of this it's a massive property so you know it had such potential but after that GM plant shut down um, you know people were out of their work uh, people were not commuting to Doraville and so we continue our coverage right now with a look at the revitalization of this part of DeKalb County and Metro Atlanta and how this is a really an exciting new chapter after you know such an important part of so many people's work and lives shut down. So that part of the story picks up now with Atlanta News first reporter Adam Murphy, and you'll hear from him about um, some of the personal experiences that he had while working on this story. In the city of Doraville, there is a hustle and bustle of traffic on Buford Highway at 285. But if you spend any time here, you'll quickly realize something is missing. Really, Doraville grew up around that GM plant, so when it left, that was a, a major loss for us. Doraville Mayor Joseph Garman said life changed here when the General Motors plant shut down 15 years ago. Hundreds of jobs vanished, and so did the people, leaving a gaping hole in the heart of the city. There was actually a lot of business that was lost. Justin Tate is the general manager of Baldino's Sandwich Shop in town. He said his store lost about 40% of its lunch business after the closure of the GM plant. There were people that would come in and say, hey, you know, this is probably my last time coming here. I'm no longer working across the street. Now, for the first time in more than a decade, there is a new heartbeat that will soon bring opportunities and life back to Doraville. But I do think property values are going to go up and we will see um, increased revenue based on that. Great Television's new development, Assembly Atlanta, will bring a new live, work and play studio city to the old GM site giving new businesses in town a sense of hope. We're just looking forward to more foot traffic, uh, economic growth, new jobs, etc. I mean, it's just a win-win for everybody. But I think the assembly is going to offer a lot of new opportunity and growth, and we're really excited about it. The mayor told me that Assembly Atlanta is expected to generate more than 3,500 new jobs, more than making up for the 800 or so that were lost. The heartbeat is back and the future is bright here in Doraville. At Assembly Atlanta, Adam Murphy, Atlanta News First. The future is bright. We know so many people are excited for what's to come. And as we talk about revitalization, let's talk about the housing market in Doraville and what this could mean to this part of Metro Atlanta, as perhaps people choose to move here because of this. For that part of the story, Atlanta News First reporter Brittany Ford looked into that. Of our very own reporter, Brittany. <laughs> so this is the kitchen. We had the cabinets um, and the countertops replaced. Tracy Queen is a longtime Doraville homeowner who just put her home on the market. And this is our backyard. We her thoughts on the long awaited assembly studio nearing its completion. What's interesting is we've been watching that for years and we've been hearing all kinds of exciting things that were coming. And while she's selling for a little bit more space, it's properties like hers that will soon be in high demand. I think the market definitely will boom. If anything, it will increase and help the economic growth here because this particular studio is going to bring multiple drives to the area. 
Erica Canada is a realtor with Atlanta Communities Real Estate. This area is still pretty popular. This is a very nice established neighborhood. Canada says homes in Doraville are currently going for two hundred to six hundred thousand dollars. She says the attraction will increase home values, but it also comes with a setback. We need more homes. <laughs> high demand and low inventory and what is anticipated to be more people looking to rent than buy. Canada says developers are capitalizing on that very thing. Around the area of Doraville, there is a lot of new developments. We have some new construction in Tucker. We have some new construction that's happening in Brookhaven. Empty plots like these will soon look like this, with several apartment complexes taking shape throughout the area. As the studio is set to bring all the buzz to Doraville. I think it's great. You know, something productive wants to happen there. Queen, who is staying in the area, is looking forward to what's to come. Kind of got a little bit of a wait and see mentality. Brittany Ford, Atlanta News First. Exciting. We will see what happens with that housing market. All right, well, we are getting ready for Atlanta News First broadcast at noon. So we will continue our coverage here on Atlanta News First Plus later this afternoon. I'm Megan Packer. Keep it right here with us for our continuing coverage of all the exciting things happening at Assembly Atlanta and Assembly Studios. And again, stay tuned. Atlanta News First at noon is up next, and we'll see you on the other side of that broadcast. Thanks for joining us.